Hello and welcome to Uncapped, where we lift the lid off natural and low-tox lifestyles with essential oils. I'm Jess Wright, and I am delighted to have the beautiful Deb Boutsettis joining me on the couch today. They say you can intuitively feel whether someone is a good soul within the first 30 seconds of meeting someone. I've known of Deb for many years, but our first face-to-face -face interaction came only a few months ago. Straight away, I knew this woman was kind, nurturing and committed to helping others. And I knew I had to invite her onto the couch so we could get to know her a little bit better. Deb is actively building her doTERRA business at the Spoilt Space. She is a busy mum of teenagers and she lives with and manages a challenging autoimmune condition, which only adds to the inspiring nature of this impressive woman. This conversation today is all heart. Well, welcome Deb. Thank you for joining me on the couch today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I am buzzed for you to be here. I've been looking forward to this chat for a good couple of weeks since we had our first chat about this. But I think we need to hit with the really hard questions first. Who does your hair? It is fantastic. <laughs> uh, I love my hairdressers <laughs> so much. And uh, it's inside out here in beauty in Sydney. Yeah. And don't go there too often because I want Bab to get my appointment. <laughs> but um, yeah, she knows me pretty well after 20 years of, of doing my hair and she has free reign. She just does what she likes. It is awesome. And I watched your Instagram stories on the Spoiled Space last night and I saw that you went and visited and changed it to this beautiful, like, dusty pink, almost a bit of a lavender hue mm. now too. It's very on trend with doTERRA. Was that deliberate? No, in actual fact, I never know what she's going to do. <laughs> so I walk in and she goes, right, this is what we're doing today. I'm like, and I actually don't know what it's going to be until she's finished and I'm looking in the mirror. That takes trust. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Incredible. Good relationship. Very. Now I want to talk about the next big hitting question. Your business name, The Spoiled Space, it's a really interesting one. And I've wanted to ask this question for a little while because mm. I know that it's changed as well. Can you talk me through that? Yeah, so this page was an existing page that I had. Uh, if you look back far enough, you'll see some pin-up um, modelling that I did back in the day. Wow. But rather than start from scratch, um, I renamed it. Yeah. So I, I sat with it for a little bit and thought, what can I do that makes it more about community and less about me? And that's mm. where the spoiled space came from. So it's a space that people can come. It's a play on words, obviously, with the oil in the middle. But it's a space that I hope people will come and learn from uh, and ask questions and kind of try and to create a little bit of community online. Amazing. Now, I want to touch on the whole education and what you really focus on in your business. But before we do, I want to go back a little bit because you've got a really interesting beautiful, humbling story about how this all began. So how did you get involved in doTERRA, in natural living? Mm. So I was working corporate really, really long hours and out of the blue was hit with something that no one ever expects and that was a diagnosis of a reasonably serious autoimmune disorder and very quickly had to stop working and then being at home. It was a huge transition for me. So much of what we do is where we hold our value. We place a lot of value on what we do. And it's the first question we ask yeah. people when we meet them. Hi, Jess, what do you do? Mm. So I was lonely. I was questioning what do I do? Where do I go from here? But I didn't have any energy really to do anything. And the way I describe it is the oils found me. Um, I'd always really liked essential oils because they smelled nice. And when a friend said, hey, you should get some, I thought, great, I'll get some because they smell nice. And I had zero idea what was going to happen and where that journey was going to take me. Yeah. So can I ask, what is the autoimmune condition that you have? you're working with? Yeah, I live with multiple sclerosis. Uh, <laughs> why do they give it that name when we have speech problems? I don't know. <laughs> so one of my very first really major event was quite dramatic. I was driving to work and it was seven o'clock in the morning going to a meeting and I was stopped at traffic lights. I went to change as the light went 
green. I went to change into first gear. I was driving a manual car and I couldn't get my foot on the clutch. Jeez. It was gone. So, yeah, it was pretty dramatic. Yeah. How did that impact your home life, your, your work life, your world? Mm. It seems like it was just such a fast stop to everything. Well, I didn't really have time to be unwell. And mm. so I was going to doctor's appointments in between working. I was working really long hours. My husband was the more flexible in his, his work. Uh, so he would, you know, be the one picking the kids up after, mm. um, after daycare and bathing them. That was just our routine at the time. And yeah, doctors in between and going to, or having all these tests done. But very quickly it became clear that I wasn't going to be able to continue at the pace that I was at. Um, so the lesions, the damage in my brain affects my ability to read commercially. So I can't make commercial decisions based on written information. Uh, and that's pretty dangerous when you're working for a bank. <laughs> so, yeah, I very quickly had to, had to reassess my lifestyle. Was there a gap in between that part of your life pausing and you picking up essential oils? How did that yeah, transition it a, look? There was a good couple of years okay. um, and I spent that couple of years not doing an awful lot actually and becoming really quite lonely. Yeah. So what is your focus now? I know that you are an absolute advocate for natural living and essential oils, of course, that's why you're here mm. and I'm thrilled that you are. Um, but you've also got that other focus as well, that you really want to be that advocate for normalising disability, mm. normalising MS in particular, and how you can live a healthy, natural life and support your body with solutions that may not necessarily always need to come from over the counter. Mm. Can you talk me through that? How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> I've got all day. So for me, there's a couple of things for me. One is about normalising conversation, yeah. right? So we were talking earlier about we, we're happy to talk about a blood nose, but we won't talk about a period. So true. Right? So why are these subjects taboo when it makes people isolated? Yeah. Right? So to be able to talk about something that you're living with, and I really like the way that you said living with rather than suffering from, because language to me is super important. So... Words have power and I, I live with this. It is, I don't suffer from it. Yes, I have moments where I am, I don't feel great, but I refuse to use that language. Mm. So the other thing I want to do is create a safe space that people can come and ask questions. So to build that community sense so that people have got somewhere to go mm. and ask questions. And also too, for people that whether they're newly diagnosed or whether they've had some sort of condition for a while, but people that don't and that want to learn and want to ask questions, mm. I'm an absolute open book, I'll tell you anything. So that's really where I want to go with that part of it. Uh, and having the natural solutions has absolutely changed the way that I live. Mm. And I'm so much better in myself because I'm now using those tools to help other people. So I've got a sense of purpose back and that's what I was really missing. And I can just, well, we all can. We can all see how much you are thriving in this space. I mean, colour is obviously an incredibly important part of your life, it as really is mine. Is. <laughs> and whilst you're wearing black and I've got a bit of brown on, it doesn't define us because there'll always be that pop of colour because colour brings joy. And I think you radiate, no, I know that you radiate this positivity and you're not letting anything that you might be living with behind the scenes impact your day to day. So mm. I hope you know how much of an impact you are making, not only in the MS community, but in the entire doTERRA community. So thank you. Thank you. It's sometimes you feel like you're talking to yourself. Sure. <laughs> and what I'm finding really interesting is I know you as the woman that has the answers, that has the education and the resilience and the confidence to then share. You know, if we were talking about laurel leaf, for example, you'd be able to rattle off all the different uses, the benefits, and you'd be able to help me understand. And I think that's why your business has been so successful and you're on this incredible road to success. But you mentioned that MS has impacted your ability to be able to read 
commercial information and be mm. able to absorb it or regurgitate it back. Can you talk to me about how that's changed or, I guess, in terms of resilience, impacted the way you wanted to push forward in that space? Mm. So a couple of things on that. I've had to pivot in a little bit in the way that I learn. Mm. Uh, so I listen to a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. now. So I do read still. I can read, but I need to break it up. Um, so I find it really difficult if the text is bulk, mm-hmm. whereas if it's smaller paragraphs, I find it really easy. So before I buy a book, and I like a hardcover book, I don't really like to read too much on line, I'll actually look at it and see how it's actually set out. And I'm reading a fascinating book at the moment that's, luckily, it's set out really well. So I'm able to follow that kind of thing. And I'll make notes as I go or I'll talk it to myself because my ears work perfectly fine. Mm. It's just the, the connection between reading rather than hearing. So I find that really useful. I find oils really useful to help me with focus. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was probably my first emotional kind of reaction for me was when I started to use Intune Mm -hmm. because I was studying design and wanted to be able to concentrate. Mm. And that was kind of like that first moment that I realised, hang on a minute. Mm. I love how oils can impact our day-to-day and that it's not just about diffusing and making Mm. you feel a little bit happier, a little bit more uplifting, a little bit more energised. You know, we we get stuck in thinking that the oils just make you feel good and when they actually start to impact you in ways that you can operate Mm. or overcome challenges or, or help in a particular manner, that's incredibly powerful. I mean, we've had a drop of spearmint together. We've had a little sniff because it's the oil of of confident free speech. We want to be able to have a natural conversation here today and be able to share what we want to say and not feel like we're cotton mouth, so to speak. (laughs) But if I can talk about one specific oil, because I know that we are here today to talk about laurel leaf, and it's an LTO, so it's a limited time offer oil. It is available this month. And what's interesting about this is that it's featured in so many other of our products, Mm. like Easy Air, and you can really pick up the aromatic profile, the similarities mm. between the two. But I want to talk about laurel leaf in a bit more detail because it is one of those hidden wonders. It is so darn good. And I want to hear your perspective on this. Yeah, it is so darn good. And I popped a drop of that in my shower this morning. Mm-hmm. So when you pop an oil into the corner of the shower, the steam actually starts to create a bit of a kind of a steam effect with the oil, like a, almost like a steam diffuser. It's mm. just amazing. Mm. I think people get really caught up on what does it do? How do I use it? W- what's the right and the wrong? And really there isn't a right and so a wrong. True. It's how you feel drawn to use it, yes. which might sound strange, but with laurel leaf, just smelling it, it actually has a physiological effect in the body, mm. Thank you. which, you tell me what it does. I feel clear. Mm. Exactly. Is that the right word? It's your word, there's no <laughs> wrong word, right? So it does, it makes you feel really clear. It's why it's an easy ear, isn't it? Yeah. Because it assists with opening up airways, it's got eucalyptol, so it's yeah. very similar in profile to eucalyptus. Yeah. So when we think about that, it's going to help us in these times where we don't feel quite so clear. Mm -hmm. And that might not be a physical reason. That might be an emotional reason too. Yeah, good point. So anything that helps us breathe is going to help us breathe, whether it's physical or emotional. Totally. Right, and that's why the way I like to think about the oils as well is they all have a physical and an emotional component to them. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the reasons why we may not breathe properly. Mm. Well, I mean, for one, it could be stress. It could exactly. be feeling like a, a tightening and anxiety of sorts. Yeah. Uh, I love laurel leaf in the shower too because I find that I do my best thinking in oh, the shower. Totally. And I had to Google why the other day because mm. I come up with scripts, I come up with product education packs, I come up with strategies for work when I'm in the shower. And so I Googled it and you won't believe it, it's actually true. Headspace have actually come up with the reasons that it's on their website, mm. if anyone's interested. Um, we might even be able to pop the link uh, in, in the bio yeah. as well or even on the, on the page today. But 
it's really interesting how when you are in a boxed environment, it boxes out the external influences. Mm -hmm. And when your body temperature is the same as the air around you, it causes your your physical body to stop being reactional and go internal. And wow. Add the, the impact of rain, water dripping down, causes an intense calmness that you're able to tap into your creativity unlike any other space. And so what I really, really love with Laurel Leaf is the fact that we're able to bring out that emotional attributes of this oil and do your best thinking. Mm. Do you know what the emotional benefits of Laurel Leaf are? Well, I know it is the oil of triumph, which, mm -hmm. and I love that word so much, so cool. but going back in history, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years. It was used um, with the ancient Greeks mm. for their Olympics. So their, um, the wreaths yeah. that they wore when they, when they would win mm. was laurel leaf, which is also called bay leaf. I didn't even know that. Neither did I. Until How I started interesting. doing some reading. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I had a tree in my Because everyone knows what bay leaf is. Right, yeah. I know. And Caesar used the, the laurel leaf crown. Napoleon had a laurel leaf crown made in gold for his coronation, of course. Um, and that's where the saying, rest on your laurels, comes no. from, because that is, you're resting on your previous triumphs. It's just fascinating to me. That's so cool. Yeah. And our bodies recognise all of what you just said without knowing any of that information. My creative juices come from laurel leaf without knowing that mm -hmm. I'm being influenced by resting on my laurels. Yeah. That's incredible. Bay leaf, I love that. I use bay leaf in my spaghetti bolognese mm -hmm. recipe because um, Thermomix tells me that I need to pop a, a leaf in. <laughs> Don't you love and so I do that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I could do an entire podcast on Thermomix. I might be in the wrong game, so maybe I should ask for some sponsorship deals after this. Um, but back to the bay leaf. I'm surprised by the connection because to me, laurel leaf smells really minty mm. and really almost camphorous. Mm -hmm. And yet bay leaf to me is more that dried bay leaf is really earthy. But when you cook with laurel leaf, that mint component or that menthol component actually cuts through the acidity of mm -hmm. something like your tomatoes mm -hmm. in your spag bowl. And so it brings that sweetness so you don't need to add sugar. That oh, blows my go. mind. <laughs> Full of the hot tips today, aren't you we? Are. That is so cool. What do you use laurel leaf for? So, laurel leaf, I've got a couple of little props with me. Do you? Because my skirt has pockets. Fantastic. So. What is that? <laughs> well, that's I brought for you. <gasps> Did you? Thank you. So, open it up. I thought we were talking about menstrual cramps again when <laughs> I first saw that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> What do I do? So rather than buying rubbish, yes. chemical-laden crap from the supermarket, mm. we can make one of those. So if we take, and, and I can't get it off because I've just taken all my nails off, mm -hmm. on the bottom of that, turn it over, yeah. there's a little plate that... Shall I take it off? If you can. Yeah. And what's oh, yeah. inside it is a cotton pad. Okay. So we can drop laurel leaf onto that. Yeah. Shall I do that now? Yeah. I love this interactive session we've got going on here. A bit of a DIY class this going on. I'm a massive fan of DIY stuff. It is so cheap and affordable to make your own yeah. things. People, you just people don't even realise absolutely um, that you know two or three drops of laurel leaf on that. Pop oh, it I did back about in. six, but oh, I'm well, keen. There you go. Yeah. And you've just created your own breathing stick. So rather oh, than going to the wow. chemist and buying the brand that we've been taught to use, which is full of petrochemicals, exactly. to name just one thing that they're full of, but it's so easy to make your own. Those little... Oh, um, that is beautiful. Those little inhaler things are so cheap to buy. Um, they're readily Thank available you. online. So they're always good to have. The other thing I do, this is not for you, this is mine, <laughs> oh. <laughs> is I make balms as well. So you yeah. can actually make up a balm... This is not a laurel leaf balm. This is a, what I call a calm okay. balm. So this is halicrisum, myrrh, frankincense, lavender. So it's oh, all gorgeous. the really beautiful, soothing skin yeah. oils. Yeah. Uh, so it's beeswax, shea butter, a little bit of 
um, oil, depending on the time of year. In the summer, I use more beeswax. In the winter, I use a little bit less because mm -hmm. it helps, it solidifies it more. Mm -hmm. uh, so I use that for everything, lip gloss, mm. uh, any kind of irritation on the skin and mm. just carry that with me in my pocket. That's amazing. I do that as well for the kids mm. in the winter months when everyone gets a bit sniffly, they're feeling a little bit congested, a bit stuffy. And also my kids suffer from nighttime cough in the winter months because mm -hmm. the air is just so cold. That can be really irritating on the throat. Mm. So I do a balm for their chest mm -hmm. and the soles of their feet with that exact same recipe, but I do laurel leaf. Yeah. And I, you can add a bit of eucalyptus. You can add a bit of frankincense, mm. copaiba. Mm. You could even do some supportive nighttime calming oils like lavender or juniper berry or Roman chamomile. That's the beauty of this. Mm. You can be a little bit of a, a witchy poo of sorts and add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. See how the aromatic profile suits you. If the kids Absolutely. like it, use it. Yes. If you like it and you're sleeping well, use it. You don't need to be following the rule book all the time. Thank you for my little... You're welcome. Nose vaporizer. I love it. I was that kid at school. We had this tree in primary school. So I would have been about seven. And it was an unusual tree and it had a hollow in it. Mm -hmm. So we, we used to put dirt and water and leaves and make these potions up in this tree. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm that kid, you know, and I still carry on with it. I love to cook. I love to, I love to make things. And so making these DIY things, they make me happy and I love to just show people how to do it. So my phrase is I help people to help themselves. Yeah. So rather than me giving you a fish, I'll teach you how to fish. Yes. So I'll teach you how to make your balms. I'll teach you how to make your body scrubs and what have you. Then you go and do it yourself. And like you say, put your own spin on it with yeah. whatever oils you want to pop in yeah. there. What you feel is right for you. Mm. Um, lavender on its own hypes me up. But if I add a wood in with it, I find that more grounding. So it's whatever works personally. Yeah. And you also talked about the bottom of your feet. Mm. Now, there's a couple of reasons I use the bottom of my feet to apply oils. One mm -hmm. is it maps the body anyway. Mm -hmm. So from a reflexology perspective, we can use that. But the other thing is if you don't like the smell of an oil, it's further away from your nose. <laughs> That's a really good point. It's actually a really, really good point. And maybe I subliminally did this with the kids without realising because laurel leaf kind of smells a bit like peppermint. For my kids' sensitive little noses, they think it's in their eyes. As soon as they mm. smell it, it's like, it's in my face, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But feet, they let me do it because mm. it's further away. Mm. Isn't that so interesting? And I love the fact that we've got this kind of double, triple, quadruple benefit when you're using essential oils, you're ditching and switching the chemical, toxic laden yeah. products that you can get from the supermarket shelves and you're DIYing at home. Firstly, DIY is cheaper. It's so simple. And it's just a case of getting the recipe that works for you, that you feel comfortable doing. The second thing is that you're getting these emotional attributes. Mm -hmm. So by using laurel leaf and smelling it to clear my airway so that I can breathe a little bit easier, I'm also getting the emotive attributes. So I'm getting feelings of triumph, mm. of confidence, mm. of feeling like I can do this. That for a young child, or that for a teenager possibly going through study mm -hmm. exams, mm -hmm. what kind of impact can that make to your family by giving empowerment while also helping to support their physical needs? Yeah. You've got two teenagers at home. Do Do they partake in your DIYs? <laughs> Do they let you use the oils on them? That's a really, really good conversation. Um, I said to you earlier, while your kids are young, lap that up because they think you're the queen of everything. <laughs> they think you're so amazing, you know everything <laughs> and you can do no wrong. And then you get teenagers and realise that um, they know everything. <laughs> My kids are amazing, but they are not as open sure to applying oils. So yeah. I've got a couple of little things that I do. Uh, I put oils on me, mm -hmm. that, and they're gonna watch this and they're gonna hate me. <laughs> but I use oils by stealth, mm -hmm. all right? So I'll put an oil on myself that, and then I become a passive diffuser walking around to influence the environment, oh. all right? So they can turn diffusers off and I will diffuse by stealth as well. So I'll put diffusers on around the house to influence mood quite often. Mm -hmm. But they have gotten quite good at turning those off, uh, but they can't turn me off. So, <laughs> yeah. 
oh, I love that. And I wonder if they actually cared because obviously we know teenagers don't care about anything mum and dad have to say Mm. and they will always be influenced by their friends or by social media or YouTube or what's being happening. So I hope they're watching because this is on YouTube and then hopefully they'll be influenced by this today Mm -hmm. because if they knew that they were being supported physically and emotionally with those diffusers being on. Mm. So if you put laurel leaf with a bit of on guard, for example, Mm. in May, June, July, we're both from the southern ends of Australia, Mm -hmm. so we get the cooler temperatures in Mm. winter. If we had those two products diffusing, um, is it going to help to support their bodies through the cooler months? Yeah, it will. Totally. Is it going to help them to feel a little bit more happier and confident when the weather is crap outside and it can feel a bit depressing? Yeah, it will. Mm. We know that for a fact. So whilst they may not be wanting to have a sniff of the, the nose vaporizer that you've made me, <laughs> um, yeah, I love the idea of that passive diffusing mm. because we can still influence their, their world mm. when possibly they need it the most. Mm. Mum and dads are really good at just holding the space beside them so that they can be yeah. free to do what they want to do, but you'll always be there to help them and pick them up if they fall. Yeah. Are there any other ways that you like to use laurel leaf? Because I do want to highlight how incredibly versatile this product is. Yeah, laurel leaf is a real all-rounder mm. and with its similar properties to eucalyptus, mm-hmm. but it doesn't smell quite as funky, if that yeah. makes sense. It's a bit lighter and a little bit kind of fresher. To, that's the way yeah. it smells to me anyway. Yeah. But it's incredible for the skin. So any kind of blemishes on the skin, it's just incredible. So you can actually add that into your cleanser. Mm-hmm or even into your moisturiser of an evening. Yeah, beautiful. And the other thing that it's really amazing for is cleaning. Mm. So if you were to pop that into yes. a spray bottle, maybe with a bit of lemon, mm-hmm. it makes a really amazing surface cleaner. It would just smell incredible together with lemon, I think, too. Absolutely. It makes cleaning fun. And I say yeah. this, I swear, on every single uncapped episode that I do, but I'm obsessed with cleaning now because I've got these little <laughs> friends that make it good. Yeah. It makes it fresh. It feels clean. And... I know that we associate particular smells with being clean. Mm. I think that's why aisle nine of the supermarket oh gosh, don't does even. so well because people smell that synthetic floral aroma on their, their laundry, for example, mm-hmm. and they go, well, you know, that means that it's clean. clean. But to me now, having obviously a smarter nose than others because I've been exposed to essential mm-hmm. oils now, we know that we are feeling just that bit more empowered. Cleaning with something like laurel leaf you know you're doing good. You're getting that natural diffusing happening. You're going to be impacting the family around you, impacting the air mm. as well, and actually cleaning the, the surfaces, which is ace. I know that that's really good on stainless steel as well. So if you were to mix it with like a bit of arborvitae mm. or some lemon and a bit of FCO and do a bit of a buffing, gosh, that comes up beautifully. I'm going home to do the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband will be thrilled. He will. He will. He loves that fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute joy to have you on the couch today. You look beautiful. Thank you. It's been I've so wonderful. It. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your wisdom. And thank you for sharing such a beautiful and personal story about what you're living with at the moment. Um, and all the best. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you found some inspiration from today's conversation to support your own wellbeing and make healthier choices for yourself and for your families. Until next time, bye for now.